Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU funds to help football fans get fitter European Union plans stiff duties on biodiesel and EU puts everyone in Britain at risk of rabies Germany wins extra time in campaign to soften EU car emissions law plus immigration the agenda hidden behind the lies and deceit is revealed. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. A life sciences outfit from Glasgow has won a share of £5 million in European Union funding to help football fans improve their health. PAL Technologies has developed devices that stick to patients' thighs to measure how much time they spend in a sitting position each day and how much time they spend moving about. The equipment is already used by doctors to keep track of their patients. Now, as part of the Eurofit project, which begins next month, the firm will develop about 1,000 low-cost versions of the devices that will sit in fans' pockets and record their movements, sending the results to mobile phones and tablet computers. The EU plans to impose stiff taxes on Argentinian and Indonesian biodiesel imports for alleged trade dumping, industry players said on Friday. According to Argentinian companies, the Commission will seek to apply a permanent duty of 22 to 25% on Argentinian biodiesel from the beginning of 2014. In May, the European Commission imposed temporary import duties on biodiesel imports from Argentina and Indonesia, saying they were being dumped below cost on the European market. The European Biodiesel Board, which re represents most European companies active in the sector, said the proposed permanent duties would mean a tax of 215 to 250 euros per tonne on Argentinian biodiesel imports and 120 to 180 euros on Indonesian biodiesel. The Commission declined to confirm the figures. It said concerned parties had two more weeks to make comments before the proposals are submitted to EU member states, which should be decided by November the 28th on these duties. Britain faces a growing risk from rabies after the government refused to challenge an EU directive relaxing strict UK quarantine laws. Respected charity The Dogs Trust said it had significant concerns about the security of the pet passport scheme which Brussels forced into law last year. It has triggered a boom in smuggled puppies from Eastern Europe where pet passports are easily forged and where rabies is far more serious a problem. The Trust's top vet told The Express Online it's a big worry, we don't know what's coming under the radar. As a result of the last year's reforms, puppies coming in to the UK no longer have to be blood tested and wait six months following vaccination before entering the country. Pet owners now only have to produce a document to show the animals have had a rabies vaccination before being allowed into the UK. The scheme has led to a 60% increase in the number of people travelling with pets, but Dogs Trust and Top Vets believe some animals are entering the country on false papers and the current fad for designer pets, such as small dogs, is only fueling the demand. Now, it would be a terrible tragedy if after so many years being rabies-free, the UK were to carry the infection. Frankly, border controls need urgent and critical attention. And there's more to come on this topic later in the show. Germany found unexpected allies on Friday in its campaign to protect its premium automakers, convincing EU diplomats to delay a vote on new carbon emissions limits to take effect after 2020. The European Union agreed a deal in June to cut CO2 to 95 grams per kilometre for all new EU cars from 2020, but Germany has lobbied to weaken the measure. Analysts say it would be a major challenge for German car makers Daimler and BMW. At a closed-door meeting of EU member states on Friday, Germany was backed by Britain, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Slovakia in calling for more time, EU sources said on conditions of anonymity. 
Don't you just love it? <laughs> Those innocuous phrases, closed door meeting, which means the member states met in secret with the corporations to work out a plan that could surely only benefit the people of Europe. Immigration is now a core issue for many people in Britain. It creates two uncomfortable environments. The first is a low-level resentment as subcultures emerge, creating their own ecosystems, specialised shops and social groups speaking in other languages. The second is one of fear of open discussion, present when I chat to people at the local market or in the high street. Occasionally, the increase in the immigrant population is mentioned, but you can tell by the way the topic is introduced that there is great concern about being branded racist or xenophobic. Irrespective of these labels and of the silence it creates, the problem still exists. The issue at the heart of this predicament is not just a UK one, nor is it solely a result of a failure on the part of UK governmental policy. It is a direct result of a mismatch between a political agenda and a social environment. This vision emerged post-World War II as a philosophy of integration from Jean Monnet. Espoused as the originator of the European Union, Monnet's vision was a harmonised, integrated Europe, a Europe that was a single federal nation, incapable of bringing about another devastating war like the two previous world wars of the 20th century. Documented and on record, the agenda was, and I quote, To this end, the European Union project will replace separate sovereign states of Europe with a single European state and to eliminate any notion of existing personal loyalty to your own country or heritage. Hmm. There was a fatal flaw in this vision, however. To succeed, it required deceit. Monet said in 1952, at a speech to the United Nations, the nations of Europe should be guided towards a supranational state without their people understanding what is happening. This can be achieved by successive steps, each disguised as having an economic purpose, but which will eventually and irreversibly lead to a federation. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when at first we do deceive. Immigration is a failure of truth. It is the failure of national politicians to honour the integrity of the people they represent and be truthful about the agenda. Each lie requires two others to support it. The issue is now that the UK public were never informed of the integrationist agenda and, worse still, were never asked if they wanted it. Having handed the power to control borders over to an unelected commission in Europe, British political leaders continue to deceive and obfuscate. Only when the number of immigrants from all across Europe breached the million threshold did the politicians try to paper over the cracks. Too late, the quiet whispers and resentment have already begun behind the doors and offices of homes throughout Britain. So what to do now? People who have already come to this country cannot simply be repatriated en masse. The deceit and lies of our politicians cannot be laid at the doors of the immigrants. It is time for truth and openness. I call this honesty and apology. Only with truth, openly recognised and past deceits abandoned, can we look to the future as an integrated nation and make decisions that carry us all forward together. If we work together, then and only then can we succeed together, and in achieving that success, do we then become one? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>